morning at the United States Supreme Court, uh, otherwise known as SCROTUS. Uh, the the uh, dis- the debate this morning was King v. Burwell, the case of King v. Burwell. Uh, should we descro- destroy Obamacare, essentially? And our associate producer and the uh, legal correspondent for the Talk Radio News Service, Shane Farnan, mm-hmm. um, a law school graduate who knows these things well, was there. Hey, Shane. How are you, Tom? I am well. Thank great. you. It's nice to have you in the studio rather than on the other side over there. It's great to be in here. It's a so, nice place. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so what happened this morning? This morning, uh, everyone wants to know, of course, first thing out of the box, who's going to win? And I will tell you that anyone who says they know who's going to win is a little crazy. Yeah. Because there's no possible way to know, unfortunately, because everyone was listening. If you read Ian Milheiser's piece, yeah. you know, rating the odds, he essentially said there's, it's 4-4 and, and Justice Roberts in the middle, and he's a 50-50 shot. So we were looking from anything from Chief Justice Roberts to push that one way or the other, because that would be a great indicator of where this is going to go. And he did not ask but one question. He yeah. let nothing uh, be known about what, how he was going to go. Yeah. Now, there was a really interesting turn of events in that uh, a, a number of the justices, and Kennedy was among them, brought up an issue that really wasn't in the papers uh, that the, the different parties submitted. And the question was whether or not the way this law is set up, now the law is set up so that <clears throat> state exchanges and, or federal exchanges uh, put these subsidies through to low-income families. Mm-hmm. If it, you take the reading of those going against uh, the Affordable Care Act, that it only means state exchanges, then the whole thing falls apart. So therefore, states, according to Kennedy, according to Sotomayor, uh, according to Kagan, as they argued from the bench, it seemed, uh, would be coerced into establishing these exchanges so th- there wouldn't be this health care death spiral. Right, and the, the whole issue of the federal government coercing states to do things mm-hmm. is the reason why, in the last time this came before the Supreme Court, that Justice Roberts, uh, Roberts mm-hmm. essentially said, you know, states can choose not to, to expand Medicaid. Right, because that's fir- fir- creating the red state donut right. hole. In the first case, um, the Medicaid expansion was, you states, if you don't take the Affordable Care Act Medicaid expansion, then we'll give you no Medicaid. You're going to lose the Medicaid you already have. Right. And the Supreme Court said, you can't do that. That's unduly, that's unconstitutionally co- coercive under the 10th Amendment. You have federal powers, state powers. The federal government can't tell the state to do things. Right. Um, in this situation, what Kennedy was arguing, what Sotomayor was arguing was, in setting this up, if you don't set up your own state exchange, terrible things are going to happen to you. So again, it's coercive and unconstitutionally so. Now, the, the, why did Don Varelli who was the guy arguing on behalf of the Obama administration, not open with that argument. I don't know that he wanted to put it, because this case before the Supreme Court today was about constitution or uh, statutory construction. Mm. This was, how do you read the words in the statute? We've already had the constitutional case. I don't think he really wanted to open this up to another constitutional uh, challenge, mm. because one way you could read this, 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 uh, this coercion is that, well, then you fix the coercion. You, you make it not coercive. You, you side with the government, and the Affordable Care Act moves along, and they you know, distribute subsidies through the federal and the state set up exchanges. The other way to say is, well, it's unconstitutionally coercive. We're going to strike down the section completely. And I don't think Don Verley or the government wanted to open up that door. So Kennedy, traditionally the swing vote on this court, right? by saying, it seems to me like this might be constitutionally coercive, Right. could have been opening the door to a vote to leave Obamacare as it is because mm-hmm. he doesn't want to unconstitutionally lean on the states to force them to create an exchange. Or he could say, we need to blow up Obamacare altogether because as a whole, it's too Or at least the subsidies, too coercive. At least the subsidy sections blow up that section. Right. But there's this thing, there's, called the, there's this concept called avoidance that the Supreme Court is supposed to avoid these unconstitutional readings. In fact, the last time the Affordable Care Act uh, came up, Justice Roberts said that it was unconstitutional under the Commerce Clause, but because we have to avoid unconstitutional readings, I'm going to say it's constitutional under the Tax Clause. What? I don't yeah. understand. Okay. If, if there's an unconstitutional reading to what this... Is, what, is an, what does that If mean? you read such the words and, and it's unco- you, you rule that it's unconstitutionally coercive meaning right. it violates the Constitution, if you can read it an alternative way that is not... Oh, I see. So in other you, have words, to, you have to choose the second it, one. It, it's, it's, it's sort of like, you know, in a, in a murder case or whatever. I mean, you've, 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 got to, you've got to hit that highest bar, right? whatever the highest bar may be, or in this case, the lowest bar. Mm-hmm. If, if, if you can avoid going for, 
for is it constitutional or unconstitutional, instead just go with is it legal or not legal, right? Uh, or is this what the law says or not what the law says? Then the court always takes the the least the least nuclear path. They try to avoid ruling things unconstitutional, right? Period. If when they did can. when did that start? It's been forever. Forever. That goes back to John old, Jay. You know? This is an old. You know, if right. if we can if we can read something else into the statute to avoid striking it down, we're going to do that. Sort of like court modesty. Exactly. Yeah. Although th- there have been times they've not even yeah, followed try, this. Yeah, try that with Bush v. Gore. Right, right. Okay. So, or, or Citizens United. Right, so Sotomayor brought up this this argument. Uh, this was in front of the, the challengers, the Affordable Care Act. And, of course, they were like, well, the government didn't, didn't bring this up. And it was Justice Kennedy who said, well, sometimes our court comes up with ideas that the government didn't. Yeah. So they're definitely going to you know take this up, I would believe. Yeah. Uh, so if you're looking for, you know, in the tea leaves, which is... You know, I'll tell you, I, I mispredicted the first time this was around, so don't take my word for it. Um, I would say Kennedy will probably go with the government side. And so, I don't, and we don't know where Roberts is going to go. So I think we have a better than 50-50 chance of the Affordable Care Act surviving this. And it should be it should be a slam dunk. Right. It, I mean, it absolutely should be a slam dunk. This is should is a non, nonsense case. You know, if this was about naming a library after Abraham Lincoln and the wording was ambiguous, it would be a 9-0 decision. But because it's so political... That's why we get into these arguments. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, Scalia, Kennedy, Thomas, uh, Roberts, they, they have all demonstrated over the course of their time on the Supreme Court that they're in, in those cases that are highly politicized, they're more interested in ruling on, essentially as politicians than as judges. Yeah, as Pipe Antonio calls them, politicians with robes. Politicians with robes, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Was anything else before the court this morning? That was the only case, and it went very long. Uh, in fact, the, the few times that Roberts did speak up was only to give people 10 more minutes or 10 more minutes here. So it went, went a lot longer than it was supposed to. It was really interesting. I will tell you, the argument flew by. Yeah. Sometimes I go in there and it just Now, Don Varelli was, he's the uh, Solicitor, Solicitor General. General. He was the guy who was arguing on behalf of the Obama administration, yeah. on behalf of our government, right. um, against these right-wing crazies who want to do away with Obamacare. Um, he was fairly roundly criticized for a less than stellar performance last time around. It's article about it at the front page of the Washington really? Post today. Yeah, Varelli is mm-hmm. facing incredible pressure after he blew it last time. I'm uh, a big fan of Don Varelli. I think he does a great job every time I've seen him. I wasn't there for the first time, the oral arguments, just the decision. He did well today. He yeah. did really well. Good. It's, it's a lot, it's, a, it's more difficult to represent the government than a client because he's literally thinking of, 320 million people, not just the president. Right. He really does represent the, the people. The welfare of the country. So when he's asked a question, he really, you know, he's in a spot. Right. Who was the lawyer for the uh, I, for the right-wingers? I should know this off the top of my head. I can't remember. I didn't write yeah. it down. Same, same guys last time. Because uh-huh. it was funny. He made certain comments about how if these subsidies aren't there, uh, the, the state exchanges will be just fine. And Kagan said, but last time you were at the court, he argued last time, you said the complete opposite and then read back his quotes for him. Huh. Which was an interesting so Kagan, moment. Kagan was ready. Oh, she was ready, on wow. fire. Yeah, you know, I no doubt the way she's going. No doubt the way Breyer's, go, uh, Breyer's going. Uh, Ginsburg brought up standing and brought, uh, Sotomayor. I have no doubt where she's going. So it really is down to uh, Roberts and right. Kennedy. Roberts and Kennedy. Yeah. Yet Amazing. again. Amazing. And I think if 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 uh, Roberts hadn't ruled the way he did last time, people probably wouldn't be giving fifty fifty odds even on him. Right. Because right. I think this is really just more of. The last battle, he sided the other way. Yeah, if, if this was not going to go down in history as the Roberts Court, hmm. then in all probability, John Roberts would be sitting right there with uh, uh, you know, think Alito that's... going, hey, you know, let's stick it to the Democrats. I think that's a good assumption. Amazing. Shane Farnan, our, our associate producer and legal uh, uh, reporter for the Talk Radio News Service. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Tom. Great to have you with us.